Join me right now is one of the best flyweights in the world, Reese McLaren. What's going on, Reese? Hey, you know, another day, another dollar. Now, love and life, man. Well, last time we talked was before you were supposed to face Adriano Moraes. He pulled out, you know, in KL due to an injury. You lost your chance at the title. You know, Adriano went on and fought Gehe twice. How disappointing were you watching this happen while, you know, you had to fight other guys? Uh, look, uh, there was a degree of disappointment, but in my head it was also just like you just got to roll with the punches. So whatever was going to come our way was, was whatever was going to be. All right, since moving down to flyweight, you know, you stayed undefeated. Your last fight was against Tatsu Mitsu Wada in China. You got the split decision. How tough was uh, Wada? Man, that guy is so good. He, he did a lot of things that like a veteran would pull out. So in facing him, I learned a lot. He, he was very underrated. I mean, like he's three-time or two-time world champion. Um, I, I don't even think it was a split decision, but you know, judges have never been too kind to me. Well, that was last July. It's been a while. What have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Yeah, look, I just been in the gym every day. Uh, it's just one of those things, that's really all I do is, is wake up, train, chill, and then just train again. So I've been busy in the gym, man. I'm, I'm super excited to show everything that we've been working. You started with one championship in 2015. What are, the, what are your thoughts on the growth of the promotion throughout the years? It has been incredible. Oh, it's been amazing. It's been pretty cool to watch it as well. I remember the very first time... It was kind of like they sort of sold out. It was close to selling out, and now they're selling out. And just the media that I've been hit with this time around with the, the Grand Prix and stuff, it's, um, it's totally blown me away. One Championship has been in the spotlight. You know, it, it's always been in the spotlight in Asia, but now it's like hitting worldwide. What do, what do you think is the potential of the organization? Do you think that this organization will eventually surpass, you know, the Bellators and the UFCs? Yeah, I think so, for sure. The, the way that they've set themselves in, in the world and and having Asia already, like, their main spot, I think it's easy to tap into the West than it is to tap into the East. The one flyaway Grand Prix, you know, it, it was rumored to happen. You know, it's been going on the talks, and then they finally announced the brackets. Were you surprised yeah. by any of the matchups that were made? The only surprise I got was that Adriana wasn't there. The, the the matchups to me in, in my head I, I didn't really care too much for I, I just wanted to see where the champ was and see if I was going to get him either this time round or, or next but he's not even there so it's all good. What have they told you? Is the winner going to face the champ or what's going on with that situation? Look, to be honest, you, you know as much as I do. As far as I know, is the 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 Grand Prix winner will face the champ, but, but I don't know. I really don't know. All right, a lot of people, you know, when the brackets came out, they downplayed the talent, you know, since it is worldwide now, everybody's watching. Do you think it's just fans being uneducated with what the talent is? Or is it, is there merit to the argument? I don't know. I think they just see how good DJ is. And they just think he's going to walk through us all. But I can tell you, man, I can count any of us out. If any of us face him, he's going to be in a scrap, that's for sure. In the first round, you're facing a former champ, Kairat Agmedov. He is a tough, tough challenge. What are your thoughts on him as an opponent? Yeah, look, I was stoked to draw him first. I, I drew the ex-champ straight off the bat. Um, that excites me. That, that shows us as, as our camp and where, where I am in, in the rankings of it all. I like the matchup a lot, so we were pretty stoked, to be honest. Many feel that Kairat has not really evolved since winning the title. Just how dangerous is he in your eyes? Uh, when we watch him, he looks very confident. So a man that's confident and throws hands is, is a dangerous man for sure. He knows how to win. He's, what is he, 25 and 2 or something? So he's, he knows how to win and that, that makes someone dangerous for sure. When you look at this on paper, he, is, he has a strong wrestling base but then you have a strong jiu-jitsu base. And it makes it an interesting puzzle for, for both of you to solve. Yeah, uh, it's that wrestling versus jiu-jitsu thing. But 
I believe that my jiu-jitsu has always been jiu-jitsu for MMA, so it's not like a big guard gi sort of game, uh, which makes it dangerous. And I like when people say I'm a jiu-jitsu fighter. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure I am, sure I am. Training camp for this fight, when did you decide to ramp it up? We always go about that 12 to 8 weeks on a mark. We start to, to really push the, the cardio and start doing hard round sparring and, and, and whatnot. So about that 8 week, 12 week mark. What exactly do you do to ramp up your camp? Is it more conditioning or is it more sparring? What, what are you doing? Just intensity basically and, and we started dieting. About that 12 week mark we, we, I got into a, a dietitian. Uh, the fight dietitian and, and TikTok um, nutrition, basically, they, they started looking after my nutrition side of stuff. And once I started getting that in, that was pretty much when fight camp started for me. How many how many camps have you had uh, used a dietitian? Has it had a big effect on your training? This has been the first time I've had him, and it's been amazing. I've had so much more energy in, in camp and just training overall, just overall mood as well. It's been much better than in the past much better who have you been working with you know training partners have you brought anybody in to emulate Kyrod or is it just your home crew no nah, look I've got a very good team I train with number one and number two or what is Timmy yeah number one and number two flyweights in Australia with, with Shannon McLean, Shannon Ross and, and Tim so Man, like when people kind of go, well, you're going to go to Thailand and the train and stuff? I'm like, no, I've got everything I need and, and more at, at home, which is great. You're fighting in Japan on the most stacked card in promotional history. When you saw that card come out, were you like, what is going on? Oh, so stoked. Look, when they announced the card, I knew it was going to be the biggest and I was going to go the hardest. And then when they asked us to be on it, I was just like, Man, what, what an absolute honor and like a blessing to be on such a card that's going to get such huge like ratings and just viewing. It, it's amazing, man. I'm so blown away and so I feel so lucky to be on a card with so many legends. It's awesome. Usually you're fighting later on in the night, but this time you're fighting earlier in the night, so it almost gives you like you could fight, get it over with, and just sit sit down if, in, in you know cage side and watch the rest of the night go on, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping to have another buffet going. <laughs> we missed the last one because we fought so late, but you know I'm stoked. You know it's it's also nice to go a little bit earlier in the night. We, we can try and get the job done and then and then enjoy the rest of it. What type of performance? do you want to have on that night? Oh, I think everyone wants to stand out a little bit, so an outstanding performance, I guess. <laughs> Sitting on the other side of the bracket is, of course, Demetrius Johnson. You know, you have the potential of facing him in the finals. How excited does that make you feel? Oh, super. When you get into a sport, it's like you want to be the best, and to be the best, you have to beat the best, and if you have the best right in front of you and he's there in arm's length basically to to be, then, yeah, I'm so excited, man. All right, March 31st, one championship, a new era. You'll be taking on Kairok Akhmedov in the one championship flyweight Grand Prix, Tokyo, Japan. It is, do you feel that this is the biggest fight of your life? Yeah, look, uh, every fight in my head is the biggest fight of my life, so... We're trying to leave less stones unturned every camp and just get each one better. And this one definitely feels like one of the best. So, yeah, I'm, I'm so stoked, so ready to go. All right, thank you, Reese, for your time and uh, good luck on your fight. No worries, thank you very much for having me on.